All right, guys, um, we're going to be getting to a slightly different kind of topic. We're still doing equations, but we're going to be doing some with word problems. Now, I know with word problems, you know, usually kids don't like it. Um, so, um, but we're going to, you know, go through this. Some of this might be a little bit of review. Um, so hopefully have this sheet out in front of you, uh, printed out, ready to fill this in. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, um, some keywords for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Why don't you pause this video and you see these words on the left hand side I want you to place them in the box where they belong okay so pause and then I'll show you the answer soon all right um, these should be pretty straightforward I do want to just highlight a few of these like product quotient difference and sum. these are words that you definitely need to know especially when you see the word of that's gonna be timesing okay or multiplying so um, let's move on. All right, so with this next section, why don't you write an expression for these? And actually, if you want to pause and then just kind of check your answers, you can. If you want to do this with me, we'll go through these pretty quick because some of them are tricky. So pause if you're going to try on your own or just continue on with me. 7 more than x, that's x plus 7 or 7 plus x. Uh, it doesn't really matter. B, ah, B is a big one. Seven less than X. Many people are like, okay, that's a subtraction, but a lot of people think it's seven minus X, but it's not seven minus X. It's actually X minus seven. You might be like, uh, how? Well, if I say I have four less than you, I wouldn't do four minus whatever you have. You would take whatever you have and then minus four. So you see that it's a little misleading. Seven less than X means you take away seven from that X, okay? So this is a really big one that you're going to see here that you got to make sure that it's flipped the other way. 7 times x. 7 times x um, is 7x. Okay, and you really want to write it with the number in front of the variable. 7 divided by x over here is 7 divided by x. The product of x and 8. Remember, product means multiplying. Now, don't write x8. This is not the eighth movie of X-Men. Okay, It's going to be 8 times x. Okay, so whenever you're multiplying a number and a variable, you want to put the number in front. So letter F over here, the product of 8 and X, guess what? That's the same thing. It'd be 8 times X. The quotient of X and 8. Quotient means division. So now when you see quotient, you read it as whatever the numerator over the denominator. So X over 8. Like that. And letter H, the quotient of 8 and X, same thing. It's division. Now, because 8 came first, 8 should be in the numerator, 8 over x. And then the sum of x and 8, remember sum means addition, so it would just be x plus 8. The sum of 8 and x would be 8 plus x. And the quotient of x and 8, oh, these are the same questions. Ah, forget k, k and m. They're the same ones as g and h. Now, the order that we write the expressions definitely matters when we're dealing with the operations. So, for example, which operations does the order really matter? If you look at letter A up here, you notice that, um, you know, you, I can write it either way, right? Because addition has that commutative property where it doesn't matter what order. Same as multiplication, although we do want to write the number in front. But the ones that really matter are... Um, subtraction and division because it does matter which one you divide by the other because you're not going to get the same answer okay so that's really something to be careful about because now we're going to be trying some of these other expressions okay let's do this together three more than the product of five and x now three more than that means it's going to be plus right plus three now the product of 5 and x, that's multiplying. So it would be 5 times x would be 5x. And then 3 more than that would be plus 3. Some of you may be like, can I write 3 plus 5x? And yes, you can. Either one works. Letter B, 8 decreased by the quotient of x and 6. So 8 is decreased by this. So 8 if you're taking 8 and you decrease it, that means you're bringing it down, right? So minus by the what? 
the quotient of x and 6. Now, quotient means division, so it's going to be a big division problem. x over 6. All right? Now, 4 times the difference of 7 and x. Now, you might say, okay, 4 times. Now, the difference of 7 and x, difference means subtraction. Now, you got to read it exactly the way it's put. 7 and x means 7 minus x. Now, the key thing here is you're doing 4 times whatever the difference of this is. So that means when you do this, you need a parenthesis. 4 times the difference of 7 and x. Okay? So you do need the parentheses for this one. The quotient of 7 and the sum of x and 3. The quotient. So quotient means a division, right? So what are you dividing? Well, let's see, 7, right? So it'd be 7 and the sum of x and 3. So it's kind of weird. It's not just one number. It's the sum of x and 3. So that means x plus 3 must all go in the denominator like that, okay? It is not this. That's not the correct one, okay? And the big thing I can tell you is that whenever you see words like sum, difference, product, quotient, you need to treat them with priority, meaning you should really put them in parentheses, okay? Now, you might say, hey, we didn't put parentheses for this letter A, product of 5 and x. Well, I mean, I could, but it's not really needed. It doesn't affect the way we operate here. Same thing here. But here, it definitely does make a difference, okay? Here, you could put a, this over there, um, but because it's on the denominator, you don't really need parentheses to tell which one goes first, okay? So now on the back here, we're going to try to write expressions for the following. And this is what I mean. So the amount of money Johnny made, if Johnny makes $8 per hour and works eight hours, H hour. So it doesn't tell you how many hours he works. Let's say he worked H hours and he makes $8 per hour. How would you represent how much money he makes? Well, if it's $8 per hour and he works this many hours, you should notice that we're multiplying. So it'd be eight times h. This represents how much you'll make. So if he works for four hours, eight times four is 32. So now let's do the next one. The number of eggs, if there are d dozen eggs. Now d just represents an unknown amount. So you know if you know dozen means 12, so 12 is going to be somewhere in there. Now this is where some students are like, is it d divided by 12? Is it 12 times d? Here's my best suggestion. Um, plug in numbers. Let's say there's one, or let's say there's two dozen eggs, right? How many, what should it come out to be? Two dozen eggs is two times 12, that's 24. So whatever expression you make, it better come out to be 24, and it would be 12 times D. For every dozen, you're multiplying by 12, so it'd be 12 D. How about the number of feet in X inches? You might say, okay, well, I know 12 inches is one foot, so let's make sure whatever you come out to be, whatever it comes out to be, it makes a true statement. This is what I mean. Uh, some of you are like, is it going to be 12x? Is it going to be x divided by 12? Well, let's do this. We know 12 inches is one, feet, one foot, right? So if you say it's 12x, and we want 12 inches, 12, if you plug 12 in here, 12 times 12 is 144. Does that mean 12 inches is 144 feet? No, that makes no sense. Actually, it should rather be, let me erase this, it should rather be x divided by 12. And you can just check. If I have 12 inches, okay, it should be one foot, right? So if I plug 12 in for my x, 12 divided by 12 is one, and that's right. So 12 inches is one foot. So as I was saying before, a great strategy to write these expressions is to plug numbers in. Plug numbers in, just to see if it makes sense, okay? Let's do uh, number four. The amount of money spent buying D drinks and P popcorns if drinks each cost this much and a popcorn costs $4. So. It, we don't know exactly how many we buy, but if we were to buy a certain amount of drinks and popcorns, how do we represent how much money we'll spend? Well, if we buy D drinks and each drink is 
$1.50, you'd be multiplying 150 times D, right? That's gonna be the amount of money for the drinks. And then we gotta add whatever we spent on popcorns. If a popcorn's $4, it'd be four times P, however many popcorns. So this would be the expression here. Number five, Johnny's age Y years ago if he is A years old right now. And I know it's really, it's kind of weird using just these letters, but let's think. So Y years ago if he is A years old right now. So right now he's A, right? How would you represent his years some years ago, like Y years ago? If it was two years ago, wouldn't you do A minus two? So in the same way, we would say A minus Y. Pepe's age seven years from now, if he's P years old right now. So he's P years old. Seven years from now, that means seven years in the future. That means you're going to add seven in order to find his age. So hopefully, um, now we got a couple more of these. And we're almost done here, guys, okay? The sum of three consecutive integers. Now, consecutive means that it's right after another. Okay, if the first integer is x, how do we represent the sum of the next, the three consecutive integers? Now, some of you are like, okay, what does that mean? It just means, for example, like 2, 3, 4, those are consecutive integers. 5, 6, 7, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, those are consecutive integers. So how do we represent the sum of these if the first integer is x? Here's the way to see it. The first integer is x. How would you represent the second integer? The one that's one above it. That would be x plus 1, right? And then what about the one after that? The next integer, x plus 2. So the sum of these is literally you take x and you add it with x plus 1. Now you can put a parenthesis here just to be safe. And then plus x plus 2. So you see how this expression represents the first three, the consecutive integers, the three of them being added together. If we look at number eight, out of three consecutive integers, so the same thing, write the smallest and largest integer if the middle one is x minus one. So here we go. My middle one is x minus one. What would be the integer that's smaller than it? It'd be one less than that, right? One less than x minus one would be you can think of it like this, x minus 1, minus 1, 1 smaller, and that would just be minus 2, or negative 2. So it would be x minus 2. And then what would be the one right above it? x minus 1 plus 1, right, to get 1 higher. And you realize minus 1 plus 1 is just 0, so you could just represent this as x. So here would be, this would be the largest integer right here. The largest would be here. And the smallest one would be right here. Okay. So this is just a practice in how to, how to rewrite these expressions. Now, the questions that you'll be faced with more are along these lines, okay? The product of a number in five, negative 5 is equal to 20. What is the number? And what we're going to do now is we're just going to be making equations. So we are still in the equation phase. We're just now going to be using some word problems. So the product of a number and negative five is equal to 20. So watch this, it's equal to 20. The product, remember product means multiplying, a number and negative five. So a number is our unknown, but instead of writing x times negative five, we're gonna rewrite it to this negative five times x. What is that number? So guess what? We just have to solve for it. What is that number? Divide by negative five, divide by negative five, x is equal to negative four. That is a number. So let's keep going. The difference of a 9 and a number is 12. What is that number? So that number is 12. The difference, remember difference subtraction, it's 9 and a number. So that means 9 minus a number, or 9 minus x. What is that number? So here we got to solve it by subtracting 9. And then we get negative x equals 3. Now that's not our answer. Negative x, remember, is the same as if there's no number, there's a negative 1x. And this negative 1 is multiplying x. So you need to divide by negative 1 to get just x. 
x is negative 3. So negative 3 is that number. A few more. 5 less than twice the number is triple the number. What is the number? You're like, what? There's so many numbers here. Well, it's the same number, so we'll label this as x. So let's, let's read this. 5 less than twice the number is, is is a key word, man, is. Is tells you where that equal sign is. Okay, so triple the number, triple the number on this side, triple means times three, right? So it'd be three times x. And over here, five less than, remember less than is a careful, you got to be careful with this. It's not five minus, it's something minus five. So it'd be minus five, now twice a number. So twice a number would be two x, like this. So two x minus five equals 3x. What is that x number? And remember, when, at this point, we are now where we have to eliminate one of the variables because we got variables on both sides. So it would be minus 2x minus 2x. And you're left with negative 5 equals x. Now that means, guess what? Negative 5 is that number. We found the number. Last one. Half the sum of a number and 14 is 8. Is 8. So it is 8. You see that is? Now, half the sum of a number. So half means you can see it as times in one half, or you could see it as dividing by 2, either one. But we have the sum of a number and 14. So sum, remember, that's a key word. So we first should box it off. X plus 14, right? Half the sum. I'm going to, because it says half, I'm going to use half, one half times x plus 14. One half x plus, uh, so when we have this, remember you can distribute here. One half times x is just one half x. And one half times 14, or what's half of 14? That's seven. So that's plus seven equals eight. And so when we solve this, we subtract seven from both sides. And we're left one half x equals one. Now remember, when you have a fraction multiplying by x, you can multiply by its reciprocal, which is 2 over 1, or times 2. 2 over 1 is the same as 2. So when this simplifies, you get x equals 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 is the number. Okay. So hopefully this was a little bit mix of a review and just kind of um, learning how to write these equations. Okay. Make sure you... Um, Drop this off in the Dropbox to show me that you've done it, okay? All right.